Good news, everyone. Tonight, we are finally going to complete the system of German idealism. Because over the years, I have done many videos on command line programs to get things done efficiently, Neomut for mail, Newsboat for RSS, I don't know, like uh, uh, NCM... PCPP for music. I don't know why they named it that. SXIV for images, right? That's not even a command line thing, but it's 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 minimal. Uh, but there's one program that I've been using for years and I've never done a video on, and that's for good reason. It was kind of a work in progress. I mean, everything's still a work in progress, but um, it is this program here. It is LF. I'm glad I've procrastinated, not procrastinated, I've waited for when it's, I don't know, worth doing a video on. Um, LF started out, I, I've been using it since it started out a couple years ago, and it was kind of, uh, I don't know, it, it was not very commonly used. I think it's a lot more common now. Um, this is what it is. So it's a command line file browser. In fact, I use it way more than probably any other uh, terminal program, uh, you know, a kind of pseudo graphical terminal program. I don't know exactly what you would call that, but um, uh, TUI, terminal user interface, whatever. Um, so, LF is actually very, very nice. You can see that, oh, actually, I'll go ahead and say, because some people are already thinking it, hey, Luke, LF looks exactly like that program Ranger. And that's right, there is another program called Ranger that does all this kind of stuff, and it's existed for much longer, and people are probably more familiar with it. But the thing with Ranger that always kind of annoyed me is that it was very sluggish, it was very slow. It was written, of course, in Python, which theoretically their advantage is the writing things in Python. But if you are doing things very fast and that are intensive and you have multiple things running, Python is not what, you, you don't want to have a file browser in this. Um, LF is a rewrite, I mean, not, not exactly a rewrite, but kind of a clone of a Python written in Go that now I think is is coming it's a, coming to have its own. I think it's, I haven't used Py, or Python, uh, Ranger. I haven't used Ranger in a while and I don't plan on ever using it again. In fact, even nowadays you, you have image previews in LF. Uh, these actually aren't by default, but you can easily add them in. I'll show you how to add them in at the, at the end of the video. Uh, in fact, you can even have previews for uh, image previews for PDFs. Uh, I have an example uh, movie here. Um, so all kinds of files you can get either text or uh, you know video or image previews. So the basics of um, basics of LF, obviously, like any sensible program, it has vim bindings. So J and K to go up and down, H to go you know upwards or leftwards in the directory structure, and then L goes rightwards in the directory structure, and it also opens files. So we can open this file with. L and it will pop up in whatever program we tell LF to use by default to open stuff up with. Um, so I'll go ahead and say, and of course you have other things like I think G to go to the top. That might not be default. It might be GG by the, uh, by default. I'm not quite sure. Uh, capital G to go to the bottom. D typical Vim bindings. And of course for anything, you could go ahead and check the man. Just type in man LF and check it out there. There actually used to not even be a man, so I'm glad that there is one now. Um, Either way, I will go ahead and give this caveat. Uh, you can check the manual if you want to know all the defaults and all the, the basic stuff. But I've been using LF for a couple years and I have my own setup. Uh, and I, I'm not actually sure what's default nowadays. Because uh, it used to be they had, there were a bunch of things that they didn't even have by default. You had to write in yourself. Um, but, you know, oh, and I, I should say um, other basic bindings is... Um, spacebar selects things, so I'm selecting things with the spacebar, right, and deselect them with space as well. But let's say I want to move this file, um, let's say I select this file and that file, and I want to move them, I can press D to, I mean it's kind of like DD and Vim, right, delete, or not delete, but like cut, uh, and then you can move over here and paste them in. Okay, so we pasted those in, and you will now see where is it. So here's the Voynich manuscript, and here's the uh, markdown file that we have here. So I will actually take those back. Actually, we can yank them with Y and copy, although I only yanked one of them because I changed command, so we'll yank. Actually, we'll just delete that, or D to move. Okay, so either way, D is cut, Y is yank, P is paste. That's, that's all you need to know, and select things with space. All right, that's all the basic bindings. Everything else you add in yourself, okay? Or at least that's how I, th back in my day, that's how we did it, okay? So, um, LF's configuration file, like any sensible program, is in dot .config. If your program is not in dot, if your program does not have its configuration files 
in dot config, you are making the world a worse place. I just want to tell you that. There are only a couple people who still do, do that. But either way, dot config slash LF. The main file is the LFRC. I'll talk about scope in a second. That has to do with previewing files. And cleaner, this has to do with um, generating image previews or actually ungenerating them. Either way, let's open up the LFRC. And I should say that all of the configuration files that I use are on my GitHub, on, on the Void Rice repository, which I'm sure I'll link below. Or if I forget, it's on my GitHub. I think that's linked in the video description anyway. Um, so you can check the manual for all the different variables, but um, LF, I'll go ahead and say by default, uh, here's what I remember when I, I first installed it. They didn't even have a command to delete files. So you had to add a command like that or other commands yourself. So for example, here, here's how you create a command. You just say CMD, name it. I named this delete. And then within these brackets, you basically give shell syntax for a user interface. So all this is, is, you know, if I go to something and I press D, this is the interface you're getting. It's, it's actually, let's, let's make this, uh, sorry, my background is a little, uh, I don't know, interfering with things. So, um, uh, what this thing here, it, it prints out the image name and asks if you want to delete it and you can say yes or no. Uh, this, uh, C put thing is just to get it kind of in the middle of the screen. I don't like it when it's at the very top of the screen with a prompt. I don't know why. That's just how I am. Um, and if you say yes, it'll delete it, right? So um, the idea behind, this is how I do it, you can do it differently, but this is in general how you can create commands. Notice I have one for deletion, I have one for extraction, I have one for moving files to other directories, and this actually uses a file in, in my, um, you know, I kind of have a, I kind of have like a bookmark, bookmark directories file. Uh, so if I go to, let's say, um, Voynich Manuscript here, by the way, ever read the Voynich Manuscript? It's quite a fetching read. But let's say I want to move this somewhere else, I can just type in capital O, or yeah, capital M, and uh, we'll say, I don't know, just docs, right? We'll move it there, okay. Um, so that, that's what my thing here, uh, this move to command. And all of these commands are bound. After you define them, you can bound, bind them to whatever you want. So again, I have move to, bound to capital M, delete. Um, notice also I have some renaming commands, C to rename a file, uh, capital A or capital I to rename it at the very beginning, like capital I and Vim when you edit from the beginning, or you know, uh, capital A to rename it at the end, right? You know, the Vim-like stuff either way. Um, so all that kind of stuff is pretty, pretty straightforward. You can check out my configuration files, um, you know, if you want to see more of this. So the other thing, um, that's worthwhile noting, okay, so we have the cleaner script. I'll talk about that in a second. That has to do with the image previews. Um, in order, whenever you go over files, um, and you want a preview of them, in order to set what script you use as a previewer, you set it with the set previewer command, right? So I set this script right here that we just saw a second ago. Scope, this is my preview command, okay? So what I do here is um, really just, it, it, depending on what the file is, you know, I've written this so that it looks at the file mime type and depending on what kind of file type it is, it generates a preview or does something else, right? Uh, so in the case of, let's say, text, um, like just generic text like this, like the markdown file here, um, you see it, the preview, oh, look at this, it has a file name and the size and all this stuff, and it gives syntax highlighting. That's very nice. How does LF do that? Well, the question is, or the answer is it doesn't do that. It calls the external program bat, which is a, a, a nice little program you can use if you really want, where if you just run it, on a file, you can generate, it generates all this stuff that LF was displaying. So what LF is, can do is that it can run any other program you want when you go over a file, if you want some kind of preview with it. Uh, so, you know, I use Lynx, which is a terminal browser to look at HTML files or, you know, generate previews for that them. Uh, notice also the width things is just so they don't, they wrap properly. That actually makes it look a little nicer. That's what that's for. Um, and other stuff as well. So either way, you're at your discretion, you know, to add whatever whatever uh, tools you want to get it info. So audio files, it'll run media info on and things like that. So let's uh, let's say we um, um, go to uh, just as an example, just to show you what that looks like, right? So this is the preview that it gets over here, where it just gives information about the file, stuff like that. 
Um, anyway, so you you define how everything works, right? Now the complicated stuff look the, the complicated looking stuff is all this, right? So what is all this? This all has to do with image previews, which I think as I mentioned before, um, image previews are not default in LF, and in order to have image previews, you got to do four things. What four things do you have to do, Luke? I'm I'm intrigued. Wow, this is like a YouTube top four things video, isn't it? Um, well, I've actually listed out the four things you need in my LFRC, which again, you can find on my GitHub. Uh, but here's what they are. Firstly, the program that generates the image previews is Uberzug, Uberzug, uh, which in America we pronounce Uberzug. And if you say anything else other than Uberzug, I'm just going to bully you because that's cringe. Welcome to America. We're all in America if you're watching this video. So number one, you have to install Uberzug, and it is just a Python library thing for generating image previews. Um, oh, we're back to using Python, but it's just for image previews, whatever. It, it, it works, it works. And it's way, I will say Uberzug is way better than, it's light years ahead of the crap that people used to use, like W3M image or whatever. That was like, back when you used to use that in Ranger, you would like go over an image and then you would move your mouse off of the terminal and the image would disappear. Or if you'd like scroll up and down, there'd be like lines through it. It's just so, it was so stupid. Uberzug is great. Either way, that's the thing you need. So just install that. Uh, nextly, you need a scope file that does all the fancy stuff that I'm not going to talk about, but uh, you, I guess you saw, you'll basically have to copy this image command which tells Uberzug to, to create an image uh, uh, preview. And what you do here is you, you run the image command with the file and all of these like different um, uh, arguments that are basically the width and the location of it in the terminal. That's basically what that is. It's not super important for you to know because I've already set this up. You can just copy and paste mine, right? Um, so either way, you need to have the scope file. Um, and then you also need the cleaner file, which I think you may have seen out here. So there's a little file called cleaner. And this is just when you move away from an image, uh, LF has to clean that crap up since you don't want that image preview anymore and you want the next thing, right? Uh, so that's what that does. And then the last thing you want to do is whenever you run LF, um, now all of this is set up. The only thing you need is when you run LF, you want to run it. Actually, let me just open LFUB. Okay, so I have this wrapper script called LFUB, and when I run LF on my computer, I'm actually not running LF itself. I'm running this script, which just prepares the Uberzug environment and then runs LF so that it can use it. And that's all it does. So when I type in, so if you look at my aliases in my uh, ZSHRC, uh, my alias for LF is actually LFUB. I'm actually running that command. Um, and on my uh, desktop environment, when I press uh, super R, which is my binding to bring up my file manager, it brings up LFUB, right? And so I can automatically get these uh, image previews, okay? So you just do those four things and you'll be good, right? That, that's all you need to have image previews, okay? So that, that's the interesting thing. Um, the only other thing is to note, and this is just for academic interest, um, images themselves, you just create images themselves. You just create the image, uh, you know, some function. I named it image. You can name it whatever. And then it'll generate that. If you want to have previews of like uh, thumbnails of videos or stuff, you have to do this extra thing where you use like a FFmpeg thumbnailer for a video or PDF to PPM for a PDF to generate, like to get an image of that and then cache it. And then and either way. You can just look at my dot files. I, I don't want to drone on about this. So uh, a couple other things, a couple other little optimizations. Actually, one pretty thing you may have noticed um, is that I have icons for everything. Nice colored emoji icons. That, I think, is also not default. Um, let's, let's jump back to home. Um, and what I do for that, how you get that is LF will automatically read a... Um, uh, an environmental variable, which theoretically you can set in your uh, ZSH or Z profile or bash profile or just profile. And um, if you have a variable LF icons, that will supply LF with all the icons that it uses for different kind of file types. Okay, so you, we can actually look at this. So firstly, you know, if you have a PNG, it's going to use this little painting. Or if you have uh, ex means executable, you, you don't have to have extensions. You can have file types. 
Um, so an ex I don't know why I chose a target for executable files, but I feel like it makes sense. CSS is a little palette. Wow, I, I was so cute when I, I thought all these up. But either way, you just put a bit, a giant little block like this, which, I mean, it's not, it's big, but it runs instantly, right? Put it in your uh, profile file, or I guess you could put it in a bash RC or a ZSHRC. Uh, it probably wouldn't be a big deal if you had it running every time you open the uh, bash or whatever. That, that's probably not a big deal, but... Um, um, so that just, just LF automatically reads LF underscore icons variable and it will, you know, create, yeah, it does, it does the new, it does the needful as they say in India, right? Um, uh, last thing, last little optimization I have is actually, actually it's my ZSHRC. I have, um, you, you probably saw me doing this cause I probably didn't even think about it. Obviously, I have it bound to Super R on my um, window manager, but a lot of the times I want to be able to just jump into it like without typing and I can just type in on my machine. I just have control O and that will automatically open LF. So what that does in ZSH, you know, really what's happening is I have uh, let's get rid of. I don't know why I turned that on for like one command. Um, what you have here, what that when I whenever I type on or uh, what's the word I'm looking at? Control O. Sorry, guys. This video's gone on too long. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm. I can't think anymore. Whenever I press Control O, it runs this sequence of characters, which is you know Control U to blank the line, and then it types in LFCD and runs that. Now LFCD. This is actually the nice, nice little perk here. A lot of times, uh, you want to use LF partially to change directories. Now it doesn't do that by default. But this little LFCD thing, what it does is it creates an instance of LF and you can, you can use that if you want. But it has this extra little perk where if you move to another directory, if you want to do work there and you quit out of LF with Q, it will automatically stay in that directory you move to. So just to be clear, I can run that. So again, control O to get into this thing. And let's say go into the videos uh, directory. I'm going in here and now I'm going to press Q. Actually, we'll go in here. Uh, to this bids background directory. Now, if I press Q, I'm actually now in that directory, right? So you can use LF also to quickly move through uh, folders and things like that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that's about it. LF is a great program. Uh, it's still, uh, they're, they're still uh, adding things, fixing bugs, doing, doing the needful. Um, uh, you can check out the GitHub. I notionally linked it in this file here. It's right there there's the link i might remember to put that in the video description but that that's it that's lf that's the last terminal user interface program that i have not done a video on that i use and i highly recommend it and again if you don't want to figure out setting setting everything up just go to my github go to my doc files get the image thing get everything else it all comes by default you know install larbs go to larbs.xyz That'll take care of everything for you. As long as you can install Artix or Arch or something like that, everything else is taken care of for you. Anyway, so that's it. See you guys next time.